Morning. Can we just get where you guys are? The last two reports I have seen, we've seen uh, your, your report on uh, Stekfontein coal resources, a doubling of those resources to 69 million tons, and also at the same time we saw some pr uh, problems that you're having at uh, Fangafontein. Yes, at Fangafontein we are in the process of manufacturing our first phase plant, which is a 130 million rand project uh, to produce 30,000 tons uh, of saleable 5C metallurgical coal, a specialist niche product that sells at a premium. Uh, we have got board approval to build that project. We're building the plant. We do not have access to the land mm -hmm. currently, and that is subject of an upcoming court case. Okay, okay, so that's a difficult one. Yes. Down at Stagfontein, we continue to take that project strongly up the, up the value curve. Yeah. Uh, we finished the first phase of our current drill campaign, doubled the coal resources. We've got another 56 holes to drill, hope to increase that coal resource further. And then by mid-year this year, we'll go over to a full feasibility study to look to develop an export coal mine down there near Bethel. Yeah, just to remind investors again, when do you guys expect it to be, uh, as it were, uh, firing on all cylinders? Well, look, we've been in production for a while in our little clip colliery. We've actually mined that out, lots of lessons learned. We, uh, we made some money on that. We, we've completed that project. The real, uh, obviously, we'd like to get that Van Gartfontein project up and running. Um, and then we'd like to continue to take uh, Stagfontein up the development curve. We will remain um, a principally a coal mine developer for about the next year or so. Okay. But beyond that, I think you could firmly say we'll be a producer. And this focus of our producing, is that uh, 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 primarily focused on South Africa? Are you looking beyond? We do know there are light coal deposits in Mozambique. We know also there are reasonable coal deposits in Zimbabwe. Now, I think at the moment we've got our hands full with what we've got in South Africa. We've got a small management team. We've got, a limit, well, we've got the capital that we raised in 2008, just on 400 million rand. Right. We need to put that into our, our existing projects. Of course, we're not close to those sorts of opportunities, mm -hmm. but right now we, we've, we've got our hands full. South Africa it is. Let's talk about the coal market in general. Now, as, of course, South Africa is interested in coal prices for two reasons. First of all, we're a major uh, consumer mm -hmm. of the product, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's also a huge foreign currency earner for the country because the stuff is exported to overseas markets. Mm -hmm. Let's talk, though, about domestic prices. I mean, when ESCOM comes and asks for a price increase, we assume, you know, the, the cost of mining the stuff is increasing, mm -hmm. but we have no clue on prices. Where are those now? No, look, I think, I think domestic coal prices are subject of one-on-one -on -one negotiations with ESCOM, and right. it relates largely to the cost of producing that I coal. I am reading not transparent. Yeah, well, you know, with one single buyer, clearly uh, <laughs> they have an advantage. But they do buy a different form of coal. There have been some shifts in the, in the structure of the coal market. We, we're seeing people exporting more and more lower quality coal. We also see people um, uh, uh, where previously they might have produced a, a large middling portion that went to Eskom in effect subsidizing domestic coal prices with exports. Mm, mm. I suspect mm. uh, into the future we're going to see lower quality coal being exported and therefore s less coal being available uh, cheaply in the local market. Is it desirable, do you think, that there be a published benchmark, if you like, of the kind of prices that ESCOM is paying to each of the customers? Because I saw a report out today, mm -hmm. um, Paul McQuana yesterday addressing Parliament, spoke of uh, a deal that they've reached with BHP, where now they are going to revise the prices that they were pay, uh, paying to BHP to perhaps more, uh, shall we say, more equitable prices for ESCOM. And and that's, a, that's a question you're going to have to ask ESCOM, um, <laughs> as to whether they would but be Would it make sense, though, to publish a benchmark? Probably not, because they're, they're, each mine has a, a, a dramatically different uh, relationship with each power station, and many mines are developed only because there is a power station. Mm -hmm. So the relationship and the negotiation around whether the mine gets developed is not a conventional open market um, uh, discussion. That coal would stay in the ground if it wasn't for the Eskom power station. Mm -hmm. So you can hardly expect them to, to pay an open market price for that coal. I'm going to try to ask the JSC to find out if they can't put up a coal market board or some kind of board mm -hmm. where we can see the prices. But let's talk about the export market no. as well, because we've seen interesting developments in that market. Now, India, the sleeping giant of Asia, we've lately seen their uptake of South African coal increasing dramatically. Is there any explanation of that? Well, I think India was the savior of South Africa's export coal industry in 2009. We saw them buy almost half of all coal produced from negligible purchases in previous years. Um, and that is largely because of new 
coal-fired power station capacity within India. This is not India necessarily switching from another market to cheap coal in South Africa. This is actually fundamentally new capacity coming out of India. We saw the Europeans dramatically cut, cut back. The Indians stepped into the breach. The question is what happens when the, when the Europeans return? They'll probably never return for quite as much as they bought in 2005 and earlier years. But when they do return, they're going to have they're going to find that the Indians have bought their coal. Mm. And a quick check on those prices: uh, it's in eighty, eighty-five dollars. It's in that region at the moment. 